Good evening. On behalf of the administration, faculty, and staff of McClay School, I would like to welcome you to our commencement ceremony for the class of 2020. We are thankful for each graduate and for each individual who have played a part in making this day possible. Although our world is currently anxious, fearful, and uncertain, I remind our graduates of this one certainty. Their footsteps are firm because of the excellence of the academic preparation that you have received here at this institution. For with it, it today, you will join a network of local, national, and global alumni who are your kindred spirit. Class of 2020, may you be blessed from this day onward with health, happiness, and success. I would now like to welcome our senior class president, Frank Carson. Good evening, class of 2020. First off, I wanna say congratulations to all of the seniors. Our year has been unique and historic and we deserve to be celebrated. No doubt, this is not how I expected we would be finishing out the year, nor how I imagined giving this speech. I could not ignore the fact that we missed some fun opportunities at the end of our high school experience. But I think there is always a positive side to everything, and we need to be thankful and hopeful for what we have done. We can be thankful for the good times we did have together and for the friendships we made. Some of my personal favorite memories are the class field trips. We all made fun memories, spending time with each other, and I believe that we grew closer as a class. So when you reflect back on your high school experience, don't focus on the fact that it was cut short or what you missed out on. Instead, think of all the times you spent with your friends in class and of all the great teachers who made a difference in your life. Think of all the times you played your favorite sports with your friends or watched your friends play the sports that they loved while you cheered on the Marauders. Think of the nights you spent with your classmates at dances. Think about that club you really enjoyed being a part of. Think about the time you spent in the senior shack. Think of all the weekends where you hung out with your friends and think of all the laughs you had. Think of all the days at school when you got to know your classmates better and realized you were part of a big community that was special to you. Think of all the good which you did and all the good which was done for you. I believe every situation in life is temporary and the situation we are now in is temporary. Our high school years have come to a close a bit sooner than we would have expected, but we have a lot to look forward to. Our undoubtedly smart, bold, and talented class has become a family over the years. And what I look forward to the most is when we can all be together again, enjoying our class reunions in the years to come. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce our commencement speaker, Ms. Susie bush Transu. Thank you so much, Frank. It truly is an honor to be with you all this evening. What an incredible occasion, your graduation, entering that next chapter of your life. And the fact that I was asked to be part of it is truly a great honor. I feel very much at home here. I've been here in this gym many, many times with our three kids who were benefits of this incredible McClay community. I just wanna spend a few minutes with you talking about five things that I thought might be of help for you that I've learned in my 54 years as you enter your next chapter. The first of those is the importance of relationships. Truly, one of the things that I think is most important is the value of friendship. And you all have the most incredible start in this regard coming from the McClay family. Your friendships with your peers across many grades, your friendships with your professors, with your teachers, with the community at large in Tallahassee because of McClay School, really will pay dividends for you, and I know you must be very grateful for that. I've seen my kids and how those friendships have remained very, very strong, and those will serve you very well. And I encourage you as you go into your next chapter to always take the time and really put a priority on getting to know people and benefiting from those relationships that you have that you develop over the next years in your lives, because it truly does make a big difference. The second point that I wanted to share with you is the importance of choosing a positive attitude. You, we certainly can understand in the times that we're in today about how each day can bring a lot of uncertainty and sometimes negativity. But you know what? We get to choose each and every day what happens the first thing when we wake up and we put our feet beside our bed. We get to choose our attitude. And there's a book that my husband Tripp and I read years ago 
the fish philosophy. And the fish philosophy had four tenets to being successful personally and professionally. And one of those was choosing a positive attitude each and every day. And then it was funny because we had the opportunity to learn from a life coach about two years after that. And one of the things that he shared with our group at Tri-Eagle, our business team, was every day, first thing you should do, whether you believe it or not, is say to yourself, I'm excellent and exceptional. I'm excellent and exceptional. So even if you don't really feel that that morning, if you say that and sometimes say it out loud, your day will actually be better than it would have been otherwise. And the people around you will benefit from that positive energy that you're carrying. So you can really make a difference for yourself and for those around you by choosing that positive attitude first thing in the morning. The third point that I would make is be open to new ideas. Truly the creation of Hearth and Soul, which is our family's second business here in Tallahassee. It's a retail store over on Market Street. Um, Hearth and Soul would never have been created had I not been open to new ideas coming from anywhere. My husband and I were very happy, um, busy, challenged running Tri-Eagle Sales, the beverage company. But I went on a birthday retreat with two of my best friends from college. There we are, back to friendships, right, and relationships. And they introduced me to another life coach who we got to sit with for an hour as a thank you for coming to the birthday retreat. And she's the one that said, based on what you're telling me that you love about life, hospitality, friendships, connecting people in the community, beautiful things, special occasions, she said, I see a storefront in your future. Well, I'll tell you, 10 months later, Hearth and Soul opened its doors and now we operate also in Austin, Texas. So if I had not been open to new ideas, that never would have been a blessing in my life. Also, that whole not created here philosophy, I've seen time and time again in business, those that have that philosophy truly close doors in their world versus have doors that open for them. And new ideas really are just new doors, right? They're new choices that you may have. And I'm a firm believer that more choices that you have in your life, the more opportunity you have to make a good choice and to open that next door. So that's, that's my third point. And that leads me to the fourth point, and that is the importance of communication. I really feel in my personal life and in business life, really one of the things that makes or breaks the relationship or the opportunity or the business is the ability to communicate effectively. And that means communicating up, sideways, and down communicating frequently, and using all of the tools of communication that you have available to you. So today, there are a lot of those, right? We have the high-tech tools, we have the social media tools, we have the old-timey snail mail and other tools. And if you can really kind of analyze who it is you're communicating with and what they best relate to, whether they like a personal phone call or an email or reach out on Instagram or a Snapchat, whatever it is. If you can communicate in multiple ways and figure out what that person relates to the most, that will help you be successful. And then something I've always done as well is anytime a piece of communication comes to me, I share it with others that might benefit from it. Truly, information is power. And if you can help those around you raise their power, that means that you also will have the benefit of strength around you. Because remember, you're only as good as your relations. So if they are more successful and engaged and informed, that will help you as well. So communicate, communicate, communicate in as many different ways as you can and as frequently as you can. Funny story, my dad, um, August Bush, who led Anheuser-Busch for a number of years, he had 10 tenets of successful leadership and communication was also one of them. And it really focused on sim simplifying communication. So the other thing that I think is important is to try and condense your messaging and 
Use the pro-con analysis, that old tool, whenever you can to boil down a problem. And then whenever, this is what he always said. He said, if you can't get your communication down to one page, you either don't know what you're talking about or you don't want me to know what you're talking about. So I will always remember that piece of advice from dad. And then the final point is, comes from my favorite country music performer, Tim McGraw. Some of you, that's not a surprise. Um, Tim McGraw, one of his most successful songs, Humble and Kind. Always be humble and kind. And I think being grateful, I know that you are grateful for this opportunity that you've had at McClay, for all the support of your parents, for your friends, for the opportunities that lie ahead, some uncertain and some certain. But always be humble, be grateful, and really above all else, be kind to others. And I know that we've learned that here at McClay. And um, again, I am just so excited for each and every one of you to enter this next chapter. Um, I, for one, am always here for you, um, if, if we can ever be of help. And uh, I wish you all the very, very best, and I wish you well. Take care. The concept of infinity has always fascinated me. When my elementary school teacher first told me there was an infinite stretch of numbers between zero and one, I was astounded. I think I actually tried to count them all up to prove it wrong. Some of the teachers watching this are like, yeah, seems about right. Think about that for a second. When you count from zero to one, you skip over an infinite quantity of decimal numbers. Doesn't that just blow your mind? Kind of hard for me to gauge the audience reaction here, but I'm imagining a collective gasp, wide eyes, jaw drop. Seriously though, math talk, ugh. Here's where this becomes relevant. I've been doing a lot of reflecting on the past four years. When I was writing this speech, I kept thinking, what do you say? at an ending like this? How do you reflect on a phase of life that was cut short? How do you reckon with lost time? And the answer I came up with is infinity. We began at zero as humble freshmen, hopelessly confused by the quad, clinging to the safety of D-pod and awkward clusters. Now, we're at 0.999. We stand on the brink of a new chapter, a broader world, and a promising future. Think of all the moments we lived through to get here. I think we're tempted to focus on the big things, but that mentality fails to take into account the richness of our everyday experiences. Consider, instead, the sheer volume of small things, the little moments that stuck with you over the years. Gazing at the solar flower gleaming in the sunlight as you walk to the car, wondering if it's home run proof. Watching Dr. Day harass everyone within a 20 foot radius when he ventures out of his cave, sorry, classroom, and briefly reenters society to make copies. Noticing the way those curtains elegantly billow so close to the lit candles during the honor code signing ceremony. Will all of those ill-timed fire drills finally become useful? At least the lighting in car -T would be better. Listening to the muffled echo of Mr. Coop's voice during a comp sci lecture and becoming acutely aware of the fact that you're sitting in a storage container and that's kind of weird. Savoring that particular brand of silence that occurs when the intercom system beeps and the teacher pauses and nothing happens. Even better is when the teacher is lured into a false sense of security and resumes just as the announcement starts. Pulling out your phone to Google that strange word Dr. Burke just said, monopsony, contango, what? Sitting outside with friends at lunch despite the blistering Florida heat and starchy dress for success attire, because you're enjoying each other's company too much to move. Reading a poem in Dr. Bevan's class and miraculously seeing a reflection of yourself. 
in the morning, saying goodbye to your parents over your shoulder, and as you rush out the door, sensing unspoken words of love. Watching the sun rise over Meridian on the way to school, as all of a sudden it dawns on you how beautiful life is. There are infinitely many numbers between zero and one. There are just as many moments, big and small, funny and weird and profound and meaningful that each of you has lived through from the day you nervously set foot on the upper school campus until now. Cherish those moments. Bask in the warmth they give off. Rely on them when you need a little help. All the infinite bits and pieces, decimals and fractions of memory will come together to define what Maclay means to you. And nothing, not even a global pandemic, can scratch the surface of infinity. Congratulations, class of 2020. Well done. And now, Ms. Heather Boss, Dean of Students. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the class of 2020. Rachel Lauren Abbott. Colin Patrick Acuff. Ololuwapo Adeshina. Carter Jacob Albritton. Miriam De Silva Alvi. William Henry Angerer. Jillian Lise Beck. Junius Douglas Brown IV. Frank Spencer Carson. Mary Elizabeth Castillo. Samuel Elliot Chase. Raleigh Isabella Choice. Madison Lee Cordell. Simon Yao Corpus. Taylee Gina Cotton. Thomas Hunt Dyson Jr. Caroline Margaret Delegal. Lauren Elizabeth Desi. Emily Alexandra Dudley. Wade Middleton Eastman. Mia Mackenzie Evert. Lauren Annabelle Fleischer. Jacob Matthew Ramos Flynn. Laura Catherine Foote. Mary Frances Ganey. Michael Anthony Glaze Jr. William Hunter Grant. Riley Jacob Greenstein. Alexander Enrique Guzman. Parker Saxon Hannon. Brecht William Hutchin Jr. Walker Gibbons Hicks. Logan Lee Homison. Hannah Brooke Jose. Damien Thiel Hundley. Elias Leo Jaffe. Ashley Michelle Johnson. Thomas Henry Johnson. Olivia Lauren Jusco. William Kenneth Kirkpatrick. Joanna Alden Kupacheski. Anthony William Ladadio. Beecher Best Lewis. Catherine Nicole Lyons. Mary Allison McHugh. Anne Bannerman McFarlane. John William Messer. 
Austin, Joseph Miller. Kendall Jean Minter. Ryan Harrison Moselle. Davidson Lee Oberste. Michalina Norjan Janbolatov O'Rourke. Robert Christopher Parker Crawford IV. Ansley Kate Payne. John Eric George Phipps. Samir Venkata Nagasai Panalori. Joycelyn Cherie Price. Eden Rachel Rash. Andrew Shepard Rents. Stephanie Marie Juliana Ribich. Madeline Brooke Roberts. Gavin Wellington Roll. Nathan Cole Sharkey. Brock Grayson Shriver. Molly Suzanne Sidal. Lily Victoria Simons. Avery Livingston Smith. Isabella Mason Snyder. Ashley Monet Stanley. Rachel Rose Yeager Stockel. Luke Oscar Stockstill. Madeline Brooke Stout. Owen Edward Taba. Harrison Alexander Tate. Ethan Kane Tetro. Kaylin Grace Thompson. Isabel Alexis Thompson. Joshua Edward Hall Tudor. Noah Jeffrey Van Sickle. Vincent Anthony Henry Wallach. Catherine Grace Watson. Ian David Widener. Austin Greg Wilborn. Hudson Peter Williams. Matthew Xavier Weingartner. As we close, I'd like to share a final charge to our new graduates. New graduates, we launch you tonight with a thankful and hopeful heart. For over two decades, I've watched as bright-eyed graduates, sometimes timidly, sometimes boldly, step into the next phase of life with excitement, wonder, and great expectations. As we sit in our homes with our loved ones watching this ceremony, know that across the Tallahassee area, your McClay teachers are watching with you. There is a long line of teachers standing behind you. Never forget that we all become who we are by standing on the shoulders of those who've pushed us, taught us, carried us, and propped us up from time to time. Now you're ready to walk away from the safety of McClay. This has already been tested in many ways over the last two months. The world has been put on its heels, but we are not defeated. We have not lost hope. The generations before you were not fearful, nor will you be. Very soon, as you take your next steps, which may seem uncertain now, you will realize that all of your hard work, what it has been for. As you enter your freshman year at your new school, you will find that you are more than prepared for whatever the professors demand of you. You, more than likely, will be the best thinkers, best contributors, best writers in your class at college. Let that talent take you to new heights. The world awaiting you moves quickly, can be unforgiving, and expects the best of you every day. Some days you may lose resolve, pause, breathe, and find it again. Remember the long nights of studying. Remember the balancing of academics, extracurriculars, families, relationships, and everything else. Those skills developed here 
will be put to the test, but you will rise above because you've done so time and time again. An author I enjoy is James Thurber. In his story, The Sea and the Shore, he leads the reader to an understanding and a charge. The charge he gives is the charge I give you today. All should strive to learn before they die what they are running from and to and why. This, my graduates, is the path we have readied you for. So class of 2020, may the sun shine warm upon your face, may the wind always be at your back, and as your journey takes its twists and turns, always be able to look back and say, I spent my time loving people, taking risks, and doing good work that will remain past my life. And in those things, find what you were running from and to and why. Congratulations, McClay class of 2020.